Hi, we're at the Combine Naval Event 2025 in Farnborough, UK, and I am very pleased this morning to meet with uh, Royal Canadian Navy Commodore Jason Armstrong. Jason, good morning. Thanks for your time to answer a few of my questions. Can you please first tell us about your role? So, uh, good morning. Thank you very much for the opportunity to, uh, to speak with you. Uh, so, I'm the Director General Naval Force Development. And so, in my portfolio is everything from uh, uniforms to submarines. And uh, what the Navy's role is to draft the requirements. So, based on capability gaps that we assess currently or in the future and try to address those uh, through procurement. All right. So the reason I want to uh, I wanted to share a few words with you is because well, the Royal Canadian Navy uh, started the process uh, to look for a potential replacement for its uh, in-service uh, Victoria class uh, submarines. So what is uh, what are your requirements and why does uh, why is Canada looking for new submarines? We're very excited about the program uh, initiated in 2021. And uh, you're exactly right. We're looking to replace the uh, Victoria class. And there's three real key reasons for that. The, the age of the Victoria class, it's coming near the end of its uh, life expectancy. We'll start decommissioning in the mid-2030s and be uh, completed by 2040. The second is uh, the Arctic. You know, the Arctic, uh, due to climate change, the Arctic's opening up more for shipping, uh, vessel traffic, uh, and so we've increased defense and security requirements in, in that region. And the third is really the the exponential growth in submarine um, builds and procurement across the globe. And so we recognize that this is a place that we need to modernize and grow into. You just mentioned uh, the Arctic. Uh, would you say that's uh, one of the key differentiator regarding your requirement compared to other uh, submarine nations uh, out there? Uh, the ability of the, your future submarines to sail, dive under ice? Yeah, the, you know, every nation that operates submarines has their own unique requirements uh, for whether they're patrolling their shores or to be forward deployed. Um, with, the, with Canada, we have three oceans to patrol and monitor, the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the Arctic. And so there is a very different requirements from likely most of the nations that operate submarines out there. Uh, and we're taking those all into account with what uh, potentially are the builders for Canada's submarine. Speaking of which, uh, can you share with us uh, which uh, nations or industry groups have uh, engaged in uh, discussions uh, with you so far? Yes, yeah, certainly. And there, there's five uh, key builders for the submarines for Canada. So in alphabetical order, France with uh, Naval Group, uh, Germany with TKMS, Republic of Korea with uh, Hanwha, uh, supported by Hyundai Heavy Industry. Uh, Spain with Devantia and Sweden with uh, Saab Crocums. And so each of those submarines offer a slightly different vari variant and they're in a slightly different uh, area of their development, but um, all will meet the needs of uh, Canada's submarine force. Uh, lastly, Commodore, uh, what about your roadmap? When are you expecting to uh, take delivery of your first and maybe uh, last uh, submarine? So uh, ideally the first of class arrives in 2035. Uh, and then uh, operational deployment in 2037. However, we would take a submarine earlier if it was available. And so this means that we're gearing up to achieve definition by the end of this year and then commence uh, uh, down select and contract negotiations in the next two years. All right, Commodore, thank you very much. I look forward to see uh, this program uh, progressing uh, in the near future. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much and I uh, really appreciate it today.